Welcome back to yet another episode of Climbing the Ranks, where today we're bringing you back yet another historic brawl deck. Today our commander is Rusko Clockmaker, and this card is very self-explanatory, being very blue-black control based which is what it exactly is so when rusko enters the battlefield you can drink a card named midnight clock into the battlefield so it's just the midnight clock etb trigger and we all know what midnight clock does so i don't really have to explain it that much and then also whenever you cast a non-creature spell put an hour counter on each permanent you control named midnight clock and then each opponent loses one life and you gain a life so it's just going to be a lot of casting non-creature spells which is what blue black does the best and it's extreme control so this is going to be our main win con because it just pings our opponent we gain a life and then also bolsters our midnight clock so we can get even more advantage off of that another win con we could have is shark typhoon or even something like pain quandary just allowing them to, to where they just can't cast any spells and we come in with our little guys or just stuff that is really annoying such as the Ashiok nightmares that she creates so let's just get right into the deck so to start us off for our zero to one drops we have mox amber for free mana an offer you can't refuse for countering a null for countering wizard class for extra card draw consider for card draw essence flux for blinking the rusco opt for card draw spell pierce for countering certain dismissal for essentially removal wash away is countering witness protection is also essentially removal onto the two drops we have Disdainful Stroke for countering, we have Essence Scatter for countering, Keep Safe for countering and draw, Lazotep Plating for protection, Malevolent Hermit for countering, and then it's also Backside, Benevolent Geist can also protect us. We have Negate for counter, Planner Incision similar to the Essence Flux for blinking the Rusko. We have Seek New Knowledge, which is just extra card advantage. Upstan Upsubstantiate is similar to the Stern Dismissal we have, it's just removal. Counter Spell is more countering, then we also have Cast down which it's just removal because we have black in here doom blade is doom blade it's more removal feet the swarm is removal go for the throat is removal heartless act is removal infernal grasp is removal walk the plank is removal bind to secrecy counters and then we also get to get stuff advantage if we choose the other one arcade signet cold steel heart and mind stone for the tree of awesomeness onto the three drops we have flux channeler for extra proliferation with our rusco when we have a bunch of midnight clocks out there we can get them as quickly as possible and since we have a lot of non-creature spells we can get this really early midnight clock it's the og trawler drake it can get really really big because we get it make it really really big with oil counters and whenever we cast a non-creature spell we put an oil counter on it so it gets really big really quickly and it can be quite a bit of a nuisance absorb energy for countering brazen borrow for removal narset parter veils for just a huge nuisance and it also gets us more non-creature cards saw it coming for countering and heroes downfall for more removal onto the four drops we have thassa deep dwelling it's just a bunch of blink for the rusco so we can constantly get a lot of midnight clocks on the battlefield whispering wizard allows us to get a bunch of swarm with a 1-1 spirits out there archmage emeritus which just allows us to get more draw rewind counters tasha unholy archmage is just it's a bunch of stuff that's just black blue control i don't really have to explain it because it's a great planeswalker for this archetype archetype Lithoform Engine, it's Lithoform Engine, we can get double Rusko triggers if we really need to, and same with Panharmonicon, on to the 5 and up drops, we have Teferi Temporal Pilgrim, it's a great planeswalker for this deck, Time Warp is extra turns, Painful Quandary is super control, Ashiok Nightmare Muse is also just a great planeswalker as I mentioned earlier, and Paradox Engine just for basically we just get to untap all of our midnight clocks and get super advantage with this card, and this is essentially win con 2 because it's just infinite mana. Onto the 6 and up, we have Shark Typhoon, it's a win con, all runs epiphany for extra turns, Hullbreaker Horror for an extreme nuisance, QR Best of Sea God for just a great blue card, Wizard Spellbook for just return all of our non-creatures that we get, well it's, a, it's only an instant or sorceries but we just get to play them again and copy them. One with the multiverse is our budget omniscience and Portal 2 Phyrexia, this is a really really good card and I would say it's a little more underestimated but in this sort of deck it's perfect in here because we just get to steal all the quick we just get to steal all of their creatures for another win con. On other lands, we have 18 islands, 18 swamps, a clear water pathway, contain contaminated aquifer shipwreck marsh and a temple of the seed so that's it it's really really simple and really straightforward because it's just black blue control so let's just get right on to the game game one our hand is looking well really control like which is exactly what we want we're going against jota the unifier which is interesting because 
our deck is a very mid to late game while their deck is a very early game deck to just kind of kill us and swarm us put too much pressure to we can't deal with it we do have enough land to get the rusco though so it shouldn't be much of a problem and then we also have a counter spell and a removal if we do need it and then we also have card advantage with the archmage emeritus we did just draw the flux channeler so i think we're going to cast it because i'm not too worried about him getting his commander out immediately because i don't think he has enough ramp out there to get it out on turn three which is his turn right now so let's see if he can get it out there which i highly doubt or anything up to the similar level he does the settle the wilds which is basically just cultivate and let's see nope he doesn't do anything we're just going to keep it because in case he does have enough mana to cast his jota the unifier we're going to keep the wash away just in our hands where we can get rid of it because as soon as they cast a legendary spell with the jota out there it's basically impossible for us to get any advantage or any kind of way to get moving is just kind of out of the window so let's see if he is able to do anything other than the stuff that he's done we're gonna just upsubstantiate the elspeth because that card's really annoying and we did draw the essence scatter so we do have another thing with joda but we do have two mana so in case they, there is a creature that isn't in their hand that is also extremely annoying we can get rid of it we're gonna wash away the joda right now because it's very annoying and we're gonna put one counter on the midnight clock and it also gets another one because it's our upkeep now we're gonna throw the archmage emeritus down there so we can start getting more card advantage and let's see if he does anything if he can cast the joda again we do have a removal for it he does cast staff of completion and the wandering emperor okay so he gets rid of our flux channeler interestingly enough instead of our rusco but i guess that makes sense because flux channeler can get really really out of hand we're going to remove the counters from the swamp i should say and so it won't be a creature anymore and the land will be destroyed which is really funny because it's a zero zero so it, it did essentially do its job which is what we wanted we're going to swing in two at the wandering emperor to remove it and then we're going to swing in three at himself and let's see if he's able to do anything we do have a counter and he does cast the jota or attempt to cast it i should say because we're countering it once again to where it goes back into his command zone we don't have another counter spell so hopefully he doesn't have enough mana next turn to cast it we did just get the thassa and it's out there as a creature so we can keep blinking our rusco so hopefully he doesn't have much of a chance at all and now we start getting a bunch of midnight clocks and a bunch of advantage let's see if he's able to do anything against arcade signet which is a little scary there's the teferi temporal pilgrim which is also scary because that card is just pure advantage we're gonna cycle the shark typhoon right now just to get another creature out there so we do almost have a guaranteed kill this turn and let's see if he's able to do anything we get the full recycle with the midnight clock and he scoops right there game two our hand is looking also very controlly we can get our rusco out there because we have enough mana and he starts off with an evolved sleeper with Shieldred the Apocalypse. That's very scary because Shieldred is a very powerful card. We're going to keep the Consider just to wait and see if he has anything just to kind of make him sweat a little bit. We can't cast the Walk to Plank because sadly it's a sorcery. And let's see if he does anything. He upgrades the Evolved Sleeper, which is perfectly fine. We just want some extra card advantage off of the Consider we have. So we're going to play that right now. We're going to put the Swamp in our graveyard because we have plenty of land. And we draw a Temple of Deceit. And we also get to feed the Swarm. We're going to get rid of the Evolved Sleeper with the Walk the Plank. And he gets the Shieldred out here, which is perfect. So we can get rid of it with the Feed the Swarm because that card's extremely annoying. And of how cheap it is, he can just constantly keep getting it back. But he does doesn't have enough mana to get it out yet so hopefully he will never have enough we get the rusco we do also have paradox engine to start getting our infinite mana essentially and let's see if he does anything he does the black market thing again so where he gets extra mana and he can cast the shieldred sadly but we do have the heartless act to remove it before our draw which is what we want we also get to ping them with rusco so he doesn't get a trigger with the shieldred obviously because he's just lost basically game three this hand is looking also very control-esque let's see if we can do anything with it we don't have any blue which might have been a big risk this is not looking too good for us anymore this is getting really scary we're going to infernal grasp the vadrick just because i don't want to see what it does and i don't want to know what it does let's see if he casts his commander again he does a chromatic lantern which is perfectly fine we're going to do a consider when we get the island that we need and we get another island which is great we're going to put the rusco out there which i'm not sure if that was the best play but we do have the wash away to answer his commander if he does decide to cast it again he does a contentious plan he gets to proliferate and he also gets to draw a card and he lava coils our rusco which is disappointing to say the least 
but we can do the painful quandary which shuts down any strategy whatsoever so he does the painful quandary he takes five life to cast the archmage emeritus instead of discarding a card which isn't that bad he must have some really good cards in his hand we did get a seek new knowledge so we can get some extra card advantage off of that and we can start getting our midnight clock combo going because we have a bunch of mana we're in, he's going to do the sahili sublime artemis artificer which is perfectly fine i don't really care about it he gets the painful quandary trigger and he takes in their five life just to put it out there and we draw the brazen borrower which is always fun he does a brainstorm he doesn't counter it thank goodness and let's see if he's gonna pay five life or he's if he's gonna discard a card which he's probably gonna discard because i don't think anyone really wants to go down to 10 especially with a card like painful quandary he gets some advantage off of brainstorm which is fine we get the panharmonicon out there and let's walk the plank the archmage emeritus because that card's extremely annoying and there's a reason why we have it in our deck we're gonna attack the sahili he goes down to two well the sahili goes down to two he's still at 13 he does a sort of body and mind. We get the painful quandary trigger once again, and he also gets a Sealy Sublime Artificer trigger once again. So he's going to start making servos. There's the 3-3 three, three servo, which is so, so scary. We're going to put the sort of body and mind in his hand. So we only take one damage, and we get the midnight clock trigger, and he scoops right there. Game four. Our hand is looking, well, pretty good. We have the Temple of Deceit to scry. I'm going to keep the Infernal Grasp on the top because we don't have a bunch of control in our hand. We would like to have as much as we can. So we're going to throw a Swamp down. Let's see if he has anything. He's running basically two commanders with a Gigantha as his partner and the Nif Mizzet Reborn as his main commander. Let's see if he does anything on turn four. I'm not entirely sure, and he does not. We're going to cast some Mox Amber right here, which we might not have because he probably has something to destroy it because of how Mox Amber is extremely broken in MTGA. So let's see if he casts anything on turn five. He does not, neither do I. So it's going to be quite of a stand still before we can get things rolling he does something on turn six he gets the pull karanos unchained we're going to get rid of that immediately because that card is kind of insane and it has escape but he doesn't have enough cards in his graveyard to cast it he does failure he just returns it to our hand which is okay and then he does comply which is also not fun we can't cast our Ruska, which basically puts us at another standstill for another turn. We're going to get rid of the Doom Blade because we have a removal with Stern Dismissal, and we also have Walk the Plank, which I guess is just a little better because we know he's running black. We're going to put the Rusko out there finally, and we're also going to Walk the Plank the Gigantha because that's just the free commander for him, and we really don't want that. So let's see if he does anything. He does not. We get a Shark Typhoon, so we have our strategy really well set, and I don't know if he has much of a out of the way of it he does the atris double of half truths and he double majors it and we're gonna give him yeah that's exactly what we're gonna give him we're gonna give the caddy brick in a swamp and then the other knight card into his hand which is perfectly fine i don't really care about it and he's probably gonna take the helena but i don't really want him to get the he does get it anyways but it doesn't matter because he scoops. All right, game five. Our hand is looking really good because of the arcane signet ramp, and we also have two islands, so we can get stuff going, such as the saw coming. And let's see if he does anything. He gets the Sarah send it out there, which is going to be very problematic because that card is extremely annoying when it starts getting a bunch of life. We're going to get the Shipwreck Marsh. We're going to get the Rusko. So now it's not so problematic because we can block it unless he does something like his commander, the Wandering Emperor, to get rid of it but it's not tapped, so he doesn't have much of a way out. Let's see if we're going to be able to do much. We're going to... Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I think we can just leave it. We're going to swing with the 3-3. Let's see if he takes it. He does, which is fine, because I don't really care if I take one and he gains one. It's not much, because our commander's going through, which is quite a bit of damage. He... We'll probably swing in right here, unless he anthems the Paladin class, which he probably will do if the damage is going through let's see if he does do the paladin class which he doesn't okay that's perfectly fine with me and now it's my turn so we get the midnight clock trigger we get the swamp out there and let's just cast i don't know we're gonna swing with the three three see if he has any response to it such as the settle the wreckage and we're gonna flash in hullbreaker horror right now now this card is going to be a huge problem for him he gets the wandering emperor out there which is okay he exiles my commander and he does get some life but our whole breaker horror is going to be out there which is going to be a huge problem for him because it's out there and white has a tough time dealing with things other than exiling them or destroying them with stuff like faithful absence 
We're going to Holebreaker Horror. We're also going to get the one with the multiverse. We're going to get the free wizard spellbook with the one with the multiverse. We're going to put the Nyx Lotus back in his hand. We're going to swing with seven at the Wandering Emperor, making his commander probably go back to his hand, which is right. Let's see if he does anything because he has a bunch of cards in his hand that are practically useless. As long as we have the one with the multiverse and the Holebreaker Horror, we just get free cards every single turn and he won't have much of a board after we're done with it. So we're going to get the island out here right now. We're going to cast the Rusko. We're going to get the Holebreaker horror we're going to put the nyx lotus back into his hand because it enters tapped it's perfectly fine we're going to get the malevolent hermit off of the one with the multiverse and we're going to put the replicating ring back into his hand and he scoops right there so overall this deck was really what it lived off to be i mean rusko is an extremely powerful commander especially on arena with the amount of support it has i hope this card never comes to real life or else it would be a broken commander there's a reason why it's on arena and even then it's still really broken cards like painful quandary just make it to where they can't cast anything we get the full board and we get our control strategy and even if they do we just don't let them have it with cards that counter it such as like the offer you can't refuse or anything like that paradox engine never came into much of an effect but if it did it would be absolutely game winning the panharmonican did and it was pretty good with the double resco triggers and thassa was really fun i wish the player that we played against would have still allowed us to get the Thassa trigger going but it's completely understandable on why he didn't want us to do that and why he scooped because of how broken this card is but other than that the whole breaker horror was also a very notable card but other than that it was a very very simple strategy in a sense it's just counter everything get the rust go out there asap and just get a bunch of advantage off of the midnight clocks and his ping ability and then just having backup cards to win it such as the portal to phyrexia the one with the multiverse or shark typhoon so overall it was a really really good strategy it was a really really fun deck and i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching